let's talk about uh, capacitors. Capacitors store electrical energy, and they store it on uh, on plates. A uh, capacitor is really is just two opposing conducting plates. They don't have to be flat; they can be different shapes. We'll just talk about flat ones so it's easy to see. Uh, let me draw you a sketch of of a capacitor system. There's a battery, and uh, we'll run. Capacitor. Since it's just two plates, that's pretty much how the schematic works. You got two plates here, two parallel plates, and I'll run a resistor through this. And let's say I've got a switch there, and I can go there, or I can go up to this other setup, which has got a different resistor. So what'll happen is if I close the switch down to here then all of a sudden these electrons here, who hate each other, can head over to this side, the anode. And what they're going to do is they're going to rush over there, woohoo, get away from the electrons, go through here, and boom, they get stuck. They can't get across the barrier. They're on this plate, but it's separated by something called a dielectric, a material that they can feel the field with, but they can't get across. So, you know, air, for example. So they're on this side, but they can't get across. It's, it's, it's like... like they made it here, but they can't get across to there. They're stuck to the conducting plate. They can't quite make the jump across. Then on the other side, all the electrons have left. They're like, whoa, dude, they're getting back as far as they can. They're heading for the anode. The electrons, they can't make the jump across, and so they're stuck here. They can't go back, they can't get forward, and so these two plates actually wind up acting as a storage device for electric charge, and that's electric energy. So back to the schematic. I've got, I close this switch. I've got electrons rushing out of here because there's a whole mess of electrons there and I'm missing electrons here. So they head out here as fast as they can. They're going, 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 smack. They stick on this wall, on this plate here. They can't get across. Bunch of negative charges here. Because they can't make that jump over to the other side. Now, the electrons on this side, they want to get the heck out of here. There are a bunch of electrons over here. And so they're going to move away from that towards this positive side on the anode. So now you develop a positive so charge on this side. So what you've done is you've separated charge and you've stored it here. These guys aren't going anywhere. They can't go back because there are electrons here. They can't go forward because they can't jump, jump the gap. So capacitors are a great device for storing electrical energy. As a matter of fact, capacitors are replacing batteries more and more now because you can charge them faster and they've gotten them so that they'll last a lot longer. I'll store a charge longer. Now if I want to, I can use that energy. I can store up a lot of energy uh, over a long time, and then I can dump it all at once, um, like, a, like a flash on a camera. You hear that as it's charging up after you put the flash? It's storing energy in a capacitor. So if I wanted, I could take this switch now, and I could move it up to here. And now, I'm separate from this circuit. Now I've got a new circuit, and I'm driving something else, let's say. I got all these positive charges here, missing electrons, negative charges here, and now they've got a way to get there. They can go and discharge that plate. And when they discharge that plate, well, they're going to all run through here and they're going to drive something. So capacitors can be very handy. Now, the energy stored in the capacitor energy stored. in a capacitor, and I call it E sub P for potential energy because it's stored energy. Potential energy stored in the capacitor is one half times the capacitance times the voltage squared. Now how else should I tell you about this? I should, we'll use this equation, but let me give you a couple equations that just tell you how the darn thing works. The capacitance, which is measured in farads, I'll show that, is equal to a few things that go into the construction of the capacitor. The first is this epsilon. It's the dielectric constant. You've got to have some material in here between the two plates that allows the electric field to be felt by these charges. They want to jump across, but it keeps them from actually making it across. The, bigger the stronger the dielectric, the bigger the capacitance, the more you can hold. Now, the area of the plates, the more room there is on the plates for charges, 
the more charges you can hold, and so the bigger the capacitance. So the area of the plates, oops, went the wrong way. The area of the plates is proportional to the capacitance. Now, the distance is different. As the distance gets bigger, it goes the other way. As the distance, as these get farther apart, the, the capacitance goes down. As they get closer and closer and closer, it's easier to feel the charge on the other side, so there's more capacitance. Of course, I can't get too close or it'll jump the gap and discharge. So the distance between the plates is D, and it's inversely proportional to the capacitance. I'm not going to put any numbers in this equation, but it's nice to see it because it gives you a very quick synopsis of how a capacitor is put together and, and what's important. And the units, like I said, the unit is the farad after Michael Faraday, and it's with a capital F. What else? The relationship between capacitance and charge and the voltage. Capacitance is the charge stored over the voltage. Now, if you've got a capacitor, it's going to be pretty set, right? I mean, it's, you know, if it's a 50 microfarad capacitor, that's what it is. But as I increase the voltage, capacitance has to be set. I'll be able to store more charge on this on the uh, capacitor plate, right? If I've got a bigger voltage, it's going to drive more electrons. So bigger charge with a bigger voltage because the capacitance stays the same. So this ratio has to stay the same. So these three equations, these two tell you how the capacitor works. This is how the energy is stored. So let's do an example with the energy storage. Capacitors are usually, a one farad capacitor is a big honking capacitor, but they're often much smaller. They can be down to picofarads, which is 10 to the minus 12, a trillionth of a farad. Let's try something with microfarads. So let's do an example. Let's say I've got this circuit here, and I've got, uh, I've got a 6-volt battery here, and my capacitor is, um, is uh, 30 micro-ohms. Microfarads, <laughs> microfarads, sorry. So I've got a voltage of six ohm, six volts, I love ohms apparently, and a capacitance of 30 microfarads, and I'm going to charge up that capacitor, and I want to know when I do that with that six volt battery, what's the potential energy? How much energy can I store? Well, the potential energy is one half times the capacitance times the voltage squared. That's going to be one half times my capacitance, which is 30 microfarads. Now, a micro means 10 to the minus 6. So without doing a conversion, I can show this just in farads by saying that's 30. I'll just write the 30, and then when I see micro, that's 10 to the minus 6. So I'll just write 30 times 10 to the minus 6. I'm just saying what it is. I'm not doing a conversion. Farads times 6 volts squared, which is going to be 18, 540, I think uh, 5.4 times 10 to the minus 4 farads times volts squared. Now, I'll tell you this, a farad is a coulomb squared per joule. And a volt is a joule per coulomb. Uh, one volt is uh, the amount of energy you give to each charge, so it's a joule per coulomb of charge. But it's squared, so it'll be joule squared over coulomb squared. Coulombs cancel. I'll have one joule left. So yeah, joules. 36, 18, 18 times 3 is 54. Yeah, looks good. Check this answer, make sure it's right. Anyway, that's how you store energy in a capacitor. Now, there's another way to store energy. Well, there are a lot of ways to store energy. Another way we're going to talk about is an inductor. So let me show you an inductor. 